Hopefully they'll let us in. Maybe they don't want us. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. <laughs> Is the audio pretty decent here? Okay, I want to tell a story. <laughs> so this family was just taking family photos and they asked if I could jump in their family photos. <laughs> I don't even like coffee, but making it looks really cool on camera. What's up guys? I'm Father David Michael Moses. Welcome to this behind the scenes look at what it's like to live life as a Catholic priest. Right now, I'm headed back to the place where my priesthood started. They invited me back to give a talk at one of their biggest events of the year. We're also gonna be hanging out with the staff there, hanging out with all my best friends, the priests there now, Father Christopher. It's gonna be a blast. Stay tuned. My successor, Father Christopher. What's up, dude? Good to see you, Good to see you too. So this used to be my office. It uh, was definitely a lot, much more simple. Looks way better now. It looks, it does look way better now. I'm not gonna. <laughs> they say my homies are longer, but my art is more beautiful. Do you have any specific pieces you have like stories about? Uh, my friends from college give me that one. It's, oh, that's a classic. It's kind of funny though, I have a cross on, so it kind of makes me look like a bishop. <laughs> I don't know if that. What's up with the green children's calculator? <laughs> Adriana gave it to me because I'm currently uh, fudging my mileage log oh here my for gosh. the last five months. I was just I was just telling you guys, she's always telling me I got to turn my mileage in. Thank As a priest, goodness. because of the IRS, you have to log every single time you drive. You have to write it down and you have to label it as like a personal trip or a business trip. And it's such a pain. I mean, I thought celibacy would be the worst part about priesthood. It turns out logging your mileage is probably the hardest part. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, how are you? Yeah. This is where it's New Year. Happy New Year. We got you. <laughs> I we founded the place. I was uh, I was the blessed pastor to be with Father Michael for three years until they took him away. And, <laughs> and tears, the river of tears was flowing from Jerusalem. <laughs> today, I don't know about that. Today he comes to console me. <laughs> Well, it is kind of weird on this side of the desk, I will say. It's not weird for me. It's not, it's not weird for you, it's right at home for you. So one of the things we do is, as priests is people often bring things by to have them blessed. Um, so today we had uh, somebody drop off a car to be blessed. Yeah, we have a car in the parking lot. Car just in the parking waiting lot. Waiting to be blessed. Waiting to be blessed. Um, we definitely did not arrange this. Um, it's just completely out of the blue. Do you have like holy water? Yeah, I have a ton, always, at all times. You're not kidding. When water takes this long to bless, you keep it on file. <laughs> <laughs> what did you use to bless it? So we have to exercise the salt, and then we exercise the water, and then we put and the salt in the water. A lot of people request that these days. So yeah, I just keep it in these church-approved bottles. <laughs> Someone's just gonna come in one day and just start drinking. <laughs> I 
So as a priest, you you can bless things anytime, anywhere, um, but it's especially nice when you have a chance to be able to be in full vestments. You can either wear a white alb and a stole, or uh, what this is, it's a cassock with a surplus and a stole. So that's what we're gonna wear now and get ready to bless this car. And we're good to go. This Is this the car? Hey, so it turns out just in a crazy, unexpected turns of events, the, the car is actually a Corvette. But uh, I would think Corvettes, maybe even more than any other vehicle, probably need a blessing with the people driving them. And we signed a waiver, so it's good. We signed a waiver, no worries. Let's pray. They are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. One of my buddies, Father Rick, we'll meet him later on. He was doing his first blessing after he got ordained of someone's brand new car. They brought it out. And he was using this thing called an aspergillium. And it uh, looks just like this here. And he was blessing the car and the end of it flew off right into their car and dented their brand new car. And he said he was just standing there looking at it and looking at them like, I don't even know what to tell you. I'm so sorry. So when they dropped off their car, they actually left us the keys. And they said, since my birthday is coming up, I can drive it around. So. Let's take it for a spin. Yes, can I just get a double, a Culver's Deluxe, please? Culver's Deluxe. A single is fine. Single? Um, he's gonna pay for me. Okay. I thought you said I had a gift card. I do, but I'm not using it. I'm still paying, okay. Uh, can I do the Culver's Deluxe that with cheese? So that comes with cheese automatically? Yes. And no, I'll get the same thing as him. I don't know why. Anything. Keep doing what I'm doing, Father Christopher, and you'll double. be fine. Can I get a name? Moses. <laughs> That's my actual name. It's my actual oh, okay. name. It actually is Moses. That's my driver's license. Yeah, yours doesn't look that great either. <laughs> I think you win. Thank you, Wynn. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. I have two phones, one for my personal life and one for the emergency calls. I would say, if you get an emergency call right now, we're going to get there fast in the Corvette. We that's, will be there immediately. That's a great point. Call. I was thinking on the drive over, obviously we're having fun. A friend loaded us a Corvette, you know, for the day. But like the point is not like, if you become a priest, you get a Corvette. You know, like that's that's not really our lives. The point is that like if you're a young man who likes to hang out with your bros and you like cars and stuff, that does not mean you're off the hook for priesthood. Like that doesn't mean Totally like, agree. That doesn't mean like, oh another priest are like me and then I'm supposed to go to something else in my life. It means like, oh no dude, like you still need to look at this and take this really seriously. Yeah, and I would say with us, some of our best friendships were formed kind of working through giving up things, you know, right. like working through the call of celibacy, working through the call of simplicity in seminary and finding a bunch of guys who you related with, who had yeah. similar hobbies and interests before. That's so true. You bond over like the mission of what you're going toward, but you also kind of bond over the sacrifice. Yes. Like what we're giving up together. Like your honesty was helpful for me. And then I was like, all right, we're going to be boys. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like, that is kind of like the pattern. Like you look for somebody who has gone down the path ahead of you, but has the same like concerns that you do and has still chosen to follow this life. My parents came. I didn't know that they were coming tonight. We've been missed it for the it's world. It's like an hour from home, but they came all the way. So it's so good to see you guys. Now the pressure's on. My parents are here. Now I have to do a good job. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Yeah. Check out YouTube. Yeah, so we're getting ready for tonight's time of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So we're kind of walking through things. So we're just kind of trying to get a layout for what the procession's going to look like before we close it out. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Is. Oh 
Here it is. <laughs> As a priest, you get free food. That's great. Thank you so much. They're playing. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. Boom. Boom. Dude, what's oh, up, man? man. So Dude, you kind of—he kind of looks like a priester, doesn't he? I don't know, but I'm kind of seeing the black with the white. Hey, Who knows? Hey. Good to be back home. Awesome. You got it. Yup. No me digas. So I apparently I baptized this little girl when she was a baby here a couple years ago. How old are you now? How old are Tres años? She definitely says four. Tres años. So I was a priest here for three years, so I baptized her when she was just a little baby. Okay, well, let's take a picture. A girl came up to me, and uh, her, her mom said that I apparently baptized her three years ago when she was five months old. Here's a bus, you know, they used to, we used to baptize just a ton of babies. And uh, it was one of the great gifts of being a priest here is getting to be part of that moment, bringing a, a life into the church and to get to see her growing up, you know, as, as a child, as a baby, but also growing up as a, as a daughter of Jesus is just, it's just kind of amazing. And to think of all the babies I'll baptize as a priest and that I'll continue to meet them as I go on through my life, as they grow up. Um, spiritual fatherhood is just real, you know? <laughs> they don't just call us father because um, it's a cute thing to say. They call us father because it's, it's a real fan. When you start studying to be a priest, seven years seems like a lot. But to be able to do this, seven years was nothing. I would have gone to seminary for a thousand years to be a priest for a day. Instead, I only had to go for seven years and I get to be a priest forever. If you like fast cars, God still might be calling you. If you already have a plan for your life, God still might be calling you. If you love people, God still might be calling you. At 18 years old, I never would have thought that 10 years later, my life would look like this. But hey, this is priesthood.